Hey, church family. Good to be with you today. Unprecedented year, right? The question is, have you been re remained faithful to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in an unprecedented year? I remember the story in the Gospels whenever Jesus was ministering and he had ministered all day and the disciples decided that they would go out onto the lake and they wanted to get on the other side. You remember this story? And Jesus said that, you know, his boys are like, hey, do you want to go with us on the boat? And Jesus says, no, I'm going to remain here. I'm going to pray and I'm going to rest because I think he knew that there was a storm ahead. So the story goes on, the disciples get out on the lake and they encounter this storm to where there is great thrashing of waves and there's lightning and there's thunder and the waves are going over top of the boat and they are in great fear. Now I will ask you, have you encountered a storm this year where you have been in fear and you're wondering, where's Jesus in the midst of all the storms of life? And I'm here to remind you today that he's still on the throne. He didn't lean over to Jesus as he was sitting on the throne in March of 2020 and say, did you see COVID coming? He wasn't shocked. I love the rest of the story in the gospel where Jesus walks out onto the water, knowing that the boys were gonna be in the midst of the storm and he says to the storm, be still. And I believe before you leave today that Jesus is gonna walk in the midst of your storm and he's gonna say to your storm, be still. You see, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the storms of life, Jesus is still alive and well. He hasn't rolled off the throne. Nothing caught him by surprise this year. And he's still the one whenever he arrived some 2,000 years ago in that little town of Bethlehem where the stars shine bright in the midst of darkness. He's still that same God today. Can I hear an amen? Now, as you were coming in today, I was sitting in my office. And in my office is on the second floor over in the other building. And I watched you coming. And I began to pray for you, each and every one of you, because I know that you've been through some storms this year. So Margie Savala, I saw you come and my heart was with you. And there's been others of you this year who have lost loved ones. I wanna thank you for let Pastor Darren and myself and the other pastors here be able to walk this journey of life with you and to put our arms around you, to grab you by the hands and to pray with you to point you in a direction that in the midst of a sin, sick, dark world, that Jesus is still on the throne and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. As I watched you come, I want you to know that your heavenly father saw you as well. And he knows what you need today. So I'm gonna ask you to open your hearts to listen intensely for the Holy Spirit to speak to you today because I believe that he has a word for you today. And in the midst of maybe some dark times that he's gonna shine bright in your life. So let's pray and ask the Spirit to fall on us today. Father in heaven, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, that you provided a way for us in the midst of this dark world. Father, where there is sickness and there is death and there is struggles and turmoil and battles going on all around us, Lord. But Father, we're reminded today that in the midst of the storm, you walk into the storm and you say, be silent. 
So Lord, whatever your people are here struggling with today, I ask that you would rise up, that your Holy Spirit would be so real and true to them today that Lord, the darkness would be put down and the light would shine bright. So God, we call upon you and we ask for you to speak loud and clear today. Amen. Wow, what a year. Have you had moments of disappointment, distress, doubt, or depression? Someone said to me this past week, Pastor Rick, this has been a dark year and I had to agree with them, but I also had to remind him that this is still a sin sick world in which we live. And that won't change until Jesus comes back and takes us all home, amen? amen. I had to agree with him. But I got good news for you today. The light of Jesus still shines in the midst of this dark world. The light of Jesus still shines in the midst of this dark world. In fact, Jesus overcomes the darkness. Do you remember the little song that you used to sing whenever you were a child? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Now you know why I'm not on the worship team. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Some of you need to return to your childhood where you sang that song, but not only singing this little light of mine, but by the time you leave today that this big bonfire of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. You see, Jesus came to shine the light on the darkness and he has chosen you and your gifts and your talents and whenever that light sh shone upon you or shined upon you, that you would take that light and that you would begin to shine that light to others within this dark world as well. Question, did God say you will have no trouble in this world? Or did he say in John 16, 33, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart for I have overcome the world. Another translation says, for I will be with you. Do you feel his presence today? Amen. Today, I wanna share with you how Jesus dispels the darkness, how he can dispel the darkness in this world, how he can di dispel the darkness maybe I even in your own life. So here are four things of what God is doing in the midst of difficult or dark days. Are you ready? Yes, Put your seatbelt on. Here we go. Point number one. He encourages me when I am disappointed. Have you had any disappointment this year? Mm -hmm. Psalm 34, 18 says this. The Lord is near to those who are discouraged. He saves those who have lost all hope. The first way that God encourages us is that he says this, I am with you. The Lord is near you, is not left you. Like I said before, he did not roll off the throne in March. He's still on the throne and he's still the all powerful King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, it has been a tough year for many. For many of you, you've lost some loved ones. It's been a disappointing year with COVID. You're out of work. The election didn't go the way you wanted it to. The promotion you thought you were going to get, you didn't close on a deal or a sale. You thought you were gonna close on. You didn't complete the project that was delayed. Your hopes and your dreams and the things that you had hoped would happen didn't take place in 2020 and yet God is still alive and well and you may be asking where is God in all of this he's with us you've heard Pastor Darren these past couple of weeks Pastor Matt as well uh, preach about God the Emmanuel that God so desired to have a relationship with each one of us that he sent his son 
God with us. He's where he's always been. He hasn't left you. He is Emmanuel. He encourages me in disappointing times by reminding me that I never go through anything alone. He is with me. And the the darkest part of the night, I think that's where he shines the brightest. When I was in college, I had answered a call to ministry and I went off to Geneva College and that first uh, semester of college, um, I was introduced to the Greek language, preparing for ministry. I mean, it's God's language, right? He should be there to help me. First test, I absolutely bombed. And I found myself very disappointed and reminding God, didn't you say that you would be with me whenever you called me into ministry? And he reminded me that he, he, that he was, that he had called me. He said that he would be with me, but he didn't say he would make it easy. Let me tell you what he did do. I had complained and... Um, emotionally been distraught that day thinking I will never make it through and um, I decided that um, the forest is a good place for me to go alone and be with God so I in Pennsylvania I found this steep bank right off of campus looking down on the uh, Susquehanna River and I sat there looking down at this river weeping I mean a weep where snot was flying it was one of you know you've had those right I'm sure you've had and you're reminding God where are you and let me tell you what God did for me he knew that he had to get a hold of my emotional state and my disappointment he put me asleep for two hours On the side of that bank, looking down on that river, I fell asleep, and here's what happened. God gave me a dream. And in the midst of that dream, I saw God wrapping his arms around me and pulling me up on his lap and said, I got you. And when I woke up, I cannot express or tell you that the Prince of Peace had showed up. And he had calmed my fears, had given me in, uh, courage to step forward and to answer that call that he had on my life. So that was 44 years ago. That was a long time ago. God's been good. He encourages me by helping me realize he's got a design, he's got a plan, he's got a purpose for my life, and he's got a design a plan and a purpose for your life as as well. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Now, if you have your Bible with you today, I encourage you to circle hope and future. God says, I don't want to hurt you. I want to help you. I created you. I have a future and a plan, a hope for you. He encourages me when I'm disappointed be disappointed by reminding me who he is, that he is the king of kings and who I am in him and that he has a plan in the, even in the midst of a dark world. God still has a plan. So you may be discouraged today. I want to encourage you that he's got you. Number two, he strengthens me when I am distressed. I heard on the way down, if you take the word stressed and turn it backward, it spells desserts, right? Yeah. How many have had some desserts these past couple of days? All right. It may have helped you to eat that chocolate pie or all those cookies. Um, But I want to tell you, 
someone who truly takes the distress, the stress out of your life. Here's a great verse. Look at it. Philippians 4.13. This is the Amplified. I have the strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I think the NAV says, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you believe that today? That you are capable? Some of you need to put this verse on your refrigerator. I have the strength for all things. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything. Now repeat these words with me. I am competent. I am competent. You didn't act like you meant it. Come on now. I am competent. I am capable. And I am able. You're competent, capable, and able to handle anything no matter what comes your way because of Christ and the spirit of God that is infused in you when you accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Can you do this on your own power? No, no way. But with the power that God puts in my life through Jesus Christ, nothing can devastate me in 2020, no matter what happens, because I and you can face it. Not on my own, but he will strengthen me when I am distressed. Are you stressed today? I want to encourage you to let him lead you beside the quiet waters. I wish you could have been with me this past year listening to some of the comments or conversations that I've had with some individuals within our church. Many in our church have gone through some very, very difficult times. Here's an email that I received just a little over a week ago. Pastor, it's been a very trying year for our family, and we're glad to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. We are slowly picking up the pieces and recovering from the death of dad, having no work, and also being diagnosed with cancer. However... I love the word, however. Do you love it, Richard? Sir? However. However. There you go. <laughs> We've grown immensely from our struggles. Our character has been developed in the process. We exchanged our complacency for sensitivity, humility, and gratitude. We've gained a new outlook on life. You see, when you're struggling to make a house payment and all of a sudden a new car and a new dress just doesn't seem to be so important. God taught us that all we have is the gift from him and that is Jesus and we shouldn't take it for granted. We're still struggling financially and emotionally, but, I love the word but too, but God has been very real to us. As I read this the first time through, there were tears rolling down my cheeks. And then this, a blessing for all of you. I hope all at our church remember the reason for the season. And our prayer is that they might know God personally and seek his plan and wisdom for their lives. We can honestly say, that through all the struggles this year, we would not have traded God's love and our growth and character development for all the materialism in the world. Having it all cannot replace peace of mind and walking in his presence. God is real and he is good. 
My friends, that is an email from someone who knows the meaning of Philippians 4.13. I can handle anything with the power that Christ gives me in his strength. And Psalm 23, 4, even though I go through the deepest, darkest days, I will not be afraid for Lord, you are with me. Yes, it's in, my friends, the darkest night. That's when the light shines the brightest. Did you know that there are 150 Psalms in the um, the book of Psalms, or 150 chapters, excuse me. 150 chapters in the book of Psalms. And I think it boils down to this. The theme of Psalm is this, in one sentence. Life is tough. But God is good. You see, when you start trying to say, life is good and God is tough, you're off base. You should be saying life is tough, but God is good. The king, the almighty, he says, I will not only encourage you when you are disappointed, but I will strengthen you when you are distressed. Now I heard that there are 365 fear knots in the Bible. I didn't go through and check it. It would take some time, but I've heard this over and over again. And the most popular fear not is this. Fear not for I am with you. There's, a, there's one, if there's 365, there's a fear not for every day of the year. God is saying, get the message. Don't be afraid. I will strengthen you when you you are distressed. You will face some stressful days in 2021. My prayer is that you remain faithful and not lose heart for he is with you. Number three, he will guide me when I am doubtful. So when I'm confused or when I don't know which way to go, I read John 8, 12. And here's what it says. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So if you follow me, you won't be stumbling around through the darkness. For the living light will flood your path. Let me ask you, what are you worried about today? What has got you uptight? What is it that's keeping you awake at night or keeping your stomach churning? You're going to have to make some pretty tough decisions in 2021. You and I both, and neither one of us know what those choices or those decisions are gonna be. But I guarantee you, you will have to make some tough ones in 2021, just like in 2020. The question is, on what basis are you going to make the, those major decisions? Now, I hear from people at times, in the counseling center and the care center. I hear a lot from uh, people who, how they make decisions saying, well, I thought or I felt that it was a good idea. I thought it was the right thing to do. My friend's feelings are highly unreliable. You cannot always just trust your emotions. They will lead you in a wrong direction. You might have eaten a bad pizza the night before. I don't know. And it's not a good way to make decisions just on feelings. Or somebody else says, um, well, everybody else is doing it. I thought it was the right thing to do. And that's not a very good reason either. The majority is often wrong. You see, when you face doubts, there is a reliable source that will always give you the right advice and never steer you in the wrong direction. Yes, there is a place that you can trust and it's called God's word. It won't steer you in the wrong way. I fear that some of you will have to pick it up and dust it off. Because in 2020, you've been listening to the news stations. 
You've been listening to some other sources other than the source that truly gives us the direction for life. It is the only reliable guide and you must spend time in it because the storms will come and it will be your foundation on which you can stand. That is our hope and our prayer for you. It's the light. It illuminates my path. It keeps me from stumbling and helps you to see things clearly. Remember the song again that we sang as children? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Now, if Pastor Matt was up here, we'd sing it, but uh, we're not going to do that. <laughs> you can say thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> what is your foundation for life? Is this God's word? I have to be honest with you. I, as I was preparing and putting final little pieces in place for today's message and I just felt like Rick do not turn on the, the news do not turn on the TV and I sat there in front of our beautiful Christmas tree much like this ours is a little bit chubbier um, than that one <laughs> same beautiful lights white lights and I sat there just taking in God and I want to encourage you today. Turn your TV off. Don't let the news stations be your source of truth. Amen. Do not let the news stations or commentaries or things that you're reading on the internet be the foundation on which you make decisions. Amen. Put your faith and your hope in God's word the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Get the point? It illuminates my path. So when you're in doubt, let God's word be your guide. Number four, he will change me when I'm depressed. Did you know that when you get depressed, God doesn't want to just pat you on the back and say, cheer up? He wants to change you. Romans 12, 2 says this, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. I like the King James, but be ye transformed. Um, sometimes my emotional state needs to be transformed. I know the truth, right? But sometimes my emotional well-being needs to be transformed by the power of his word. Then it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to know God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. If you want to know God's will for you in this next coming year, let him transform you in fact he wants to use your depression to help you learn some new attitudes some new thoughts some new approaches some new choices in life he doesn't want to just keep you going he wants to change you I wish we could push record on some of your conversations including my own, this past year. 
Where was my trust? Where was my hope? In some of the things that I've said, some of the things that I've thought, um, he wants to change us. Illustration. I heard a preacher preach a message on depression once. He said, he had 10 points. And he said this, if you wanna get out of depression, go do something for someone. Doesn't it just feel good whenever you help someone, when you make a difference in someone's life, whenever you point them towards the light? I've seen some of you do this this past Christmas. There's someone sitting right back here that said, Pastor Rick, I want to bless somebody this Christmas. I want you to give me the name of a family that's really struggling and I want to make their Christmas extra special. So we got a name together, we got a family, and that individual went out and they purchased all this stuff and brought it, she brought it to the care center and she said, you make sure that this family gets it. So we call that family up and we say, hey, we got something special for you. And we made the light shine in a dark spot for this single mom where she had no Christmas for her family. And she wept as she received these things. Doesn't it just feel good whenever you point somebody towards the light and make a difference in their life? If you want to get out of depression, go do something for someone, point number one. Point number two, the pastor said, if you want to get out of depression, go do something for someone. Point number three. If you want to get out of depression, go do something for someone. And he had illustrations for each point. You get the point. By point number 10, if you want to get out of depression, go do something for someone. You see, God just didn't call, just call you into the light. He wants you to be the dispenser of that light now as well. He didn't call you just to come here and sit here on a Sunday morning and have your ears tickled and you feel good and get goosebumps and go out those doors and do nothing with it. He has called you to take that light and to be that light in someone's life. He is the hope. We have said over and over again that Pikes Peak Christian Church is the light on a hill. You are here for a reason. Each one of you are an individual light because you have received. And today, before you walk out those doors, I pray that that, not this little light of mine, but this big bonfire of mine, that we're gonna let it shine. And in 2021, we are gonna make the difference for the kingdom of God, amen? Yeah. Look at Ephesians 5.13. It is possible for the light to turn the thing it shines upon into light also. I talked to a gentleman this past week at our Christmas Eve services, and he loves the Lord now, but he told me that at one time he lived in darkness. Let me tell you about that individual. He found the light, and the light pushed out the darkness from his life, and he is now one living 100 watt bulb <laughs> shining bright for Christ. You see, when the light of God shines in our lives, it brightens me up. It takes me out of that pit of despair and the darkness and the light of God fills my life and I start glowing. I hope you're glowing. I start bringing the bright person that's within me shining out to others. In Ephesians 5, 9, the light produces in people all that is good and true. You see, when you allow Christ to fill your life with his spirit, it brings the best out in you. It dispels the darkness out of my life. He is the light. 
not anything or anyone else. So my friends, as this year comes to closure, you may have felt overwhelmed. I recognize that. I sat in my office praying for you and my heart is for you. But God sees you even in a bigger way. He knows what you need. Maybe you're going through one of those dark days, the dark days of disappointment, distress or doubt or depression. The good news is because of Christ, there is the light in this world that can drive away any darkness. So my friends, it's your choice. You can live in his encouragement. You can live in his strength. Let him be your guide and let him change everything in your life. He's asking you today as well to be the encourager, to be the strength that someone might need, to guide someone to the light in this dark world and to lead someone to the change that only Christ can make. Let me pray for you before we leave today. Father in heaven, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to, to see you in all your glory, to know, Lord, that you chose to come into this dark, sin-sick world and to shine bright into our lives. I thank you, Lord, for shining in my life and shining in individual lives right here. Father, I pray that the light would, would begin from the bottom of their feet the whole way to the top of their heads to shine and take captive every cell of their being, Lord. And Father, that it would shine so bright for you that they would conquer the darkness in their own lives and Lord, to be that light um, in this community in individual lives, Lord. So God, we thank you that you came 2,000 years ago, that you shined bright then, and that you're gonna shine bright again in our lives today. We pray in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. Hey, I wanna thank you for being here today. Remember, you're not just here to fill a seat. You are here and called to go make a difference yes, for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Lord bless you, and we'll see you next year. Thank you, God bless you.